What do we need to talk about? What's going on? What's going on? We all know about COVID-19. We all know about some churches not having service today. You, if, if you're watching CBS, NBC, or ABC, you saw it coming across the screen. This church not having service, and this church not having service. And then you're looking and wondering, well, Broad Rock, why y'all having service? Well, you know what? It's called choice. It's called choice. See, see, we have to understand something about fear. Fear is real. The issue is real. But, but, but what we have is another word that starts with F. It's called faith. Faith overcomes the fear. And as we move forward in faith, we are suppressing the fear. Because fear causes you to worry. But faith causes you to pray. And we are here because we are praying and asking God to continue to watch over us, watch over our families, watch over this country, watch over the world, subside the issue that is going on. Because the issue is real. But guess who else is real? God. Right? So like I said, the issue is real. And if you're not careful, the issue will cause you to what? Fear. But since you know God is real, I also are going to now have what? Faith. Because my faith is going to overcome the fear. My faith is going to overcome the fear. So that's why you're here. Some folks say, well, I don't know why I ain't going. But that's okay. You know the thing about our relationship with Christ? It's a personal relationship. So since it's personal. Y'all can have a seat too, y'all. Y'all can have a seat too. Since it's personal, we can't decide for somebody else. One. Two. Just because we're here and they're not here, we don't want to pass judgment on them either. <coughs> Amen? So, so, so what are we here to do today? Ah, somebody got me. We're here to worship. But, but, but before we even begin our worship, what we want to do right now is take the time. Let's clear our minds. Let's give God our undivided attention. So as Chris is playing something nice and soft, before we even open the service, we're going to take this time of meditation to whatever has been, what well, could, could suppress our praise today. We want to suppress it so that we can lift up our hands and praise the one who's blessed us. So at this point right now, I just ask you to just take some time out and we're going to just have a talk with the Lord and have this time of meditation. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Can we now rise to our feet? Can we now give God a hand clap of praise? Can we thank him for this day? Thank you for this service. Lord, because where would we be if we didn't have you, Lord? There was a time if something like this happened in the past, we'd been overwhelmed. But Lord, now that we got faith in you, we thank you. Let us lift up hands of praise. This is the day, is the day that, the Lord has made. that the Lord has made. Let us, Let us rejoice, rejoice and, be glad and be glad in it. In come on, let's give God a hand clap. All right, come on, Reverend Flip, and give us our prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. God, creator of everything, creator of the stars and the moon, creator of the water, creator of us, human beings, yeah. Father God. You created, uh, created us and you said it is good, God. 
Everything that you created is good, God. So we thank you for creating this day again that we are able to come and praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of truth, Father God, the spirit of faith, Father God, to get us through yet another day, Lord God. We thank you for your presence in this place, Father God. We thank you for the mighty move of your hand in this place, Father God. We thank you for calming the nerves of people, Father God. We thank you for giving us strength to endure all this before us, Father God. So we thank you, Lord God. We don't count it robbery to come and praise and worship your name in spirit and in truth, Father God. So we say thank you once again. Thank you for the ability to open up our mouths and to praise your name in this place, Father God. Thank you for the ability to raise up our arms and to praise you, Father God, because we were created to praise and to worship you. So we say thank you, Lord God. We ask, Father God, that in this place that you have created, Father God, that the atmosphere of praise would be on our lips, Father God, that it would be in our hearts, Father God, that we will praise you, Lord God, because that's why we were created, Lord God, in this place, God. Have your way in here, Father God. Have your way in here, Father God. Your way, Father God. Remove anything, Father God. Remove anything that will separate us from you, Father God. Help us to feel your presence in this place. Once we've heard the word that your man servant has prepared, Father God, help us to go out into the world and preach about your goodness, Father God, about the saving blood of Jesus Christ that is in this place, Father God. We thank you for it, Father God. We thank you for it, God. We thank you, Lord God, because you didn't have to do it, Father God where everybody else is worrying about, Father God, what they're going to do next, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because we have faith, Father God, in what you're going to do in this place, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we offer these praises unto you, God. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Let us all now recite our mission statement from this day forward. I will no longer focus on the obstacles, but on the opportunities. I will no longer stand in my own way, but allow God to make the impossible happen in my life. I will stop doubting myself and realize I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I will move in a direction that God is taking me to what? To make it happen. Because I am God's blessing. And I am. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of our God. And we, we, we thank you for coming. We thank you for how God is moving in this place. Because of the fact that all the enemy will ever do is use a negative to bind up the people of God. And what we as the people of God have to remind ourselves is whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And, and, and we know that if we are here to worship God, God's going to bless us in this worship. God's protecting us in this worship. God wants our undivided attention in this worship. And that's what we're going to give him right now. Yes. Amen? Amen? So what we're going to do right now is we're going to have the angels of praise who are going to come and bless us with worshiping God through dance. Amen? Amen.
Lord God, to introduce her uh, performing arts ministry presents the Angels of Praise. Amen.
Was that song on time? Was that dance on time? Our God is. They didn't know. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know when they picked the song, whoever knows how many months ago. They didn't know how on time it's going to be. But we serve a God who is on time and bigger. Are you seeing it? Oh, my God. And y'all saw we, got a, uh, we, 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 have, we have another new member on, on the um, Angels of Praise. I'm telling you, y'all, y'all might as well buckle in and watch and see what God's going to be doing. Amen. So we're going to let our, 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 our um, uh, youth choir go on and bless us with a song. But just before they do, do we have anybody who is here visiting us for the very first time? Anybody here visiting us for the very first time? Everybody been here, everybody here. Amen. We're glad you're here, and, and again, we're here to worship and praise our God. Go on and bless us, young people. Some announcements, and as you know, you have your 
your bulletin, you can look and see the various announcements. Um, and for, uh, they're also doing a call out to female songbirds because the Les Leslie Miller Memorial Choir will be rehearsing Thursday at 26 at 7 p.m. Looking for some more sisters that might want to sing with them. You see it right there. Then also, our prayer warrior ministry uh, will meet at the church on, in, in the sanctuary for the unified prayer time from 7 p.m. I mean, at 7 p.m. on Friday the 27th. The prayer warriors invite BRBC members to submit their requests for prayer by completing the white papers cards located in your pews. The cards should be placed in the prayer request box, which is right up here, right? The prayer warriors will pray for you and with you in confidence. Now, y'all saw the cards. The writing ain't, I mean, the lines don't seem to be that big. Just use two lines if you need to. Amen? Amen. It's all good? And, and, and if you want if you want to put your name on there, you can. You don't have to. But if you, if otherwise, we'll, all we want is to basically know what do you want us to pray with you about. And if you want us to, if you want to put your name on there, praise God. But if you don't, praise God. Amen? Amen. But all we're asking you to do is do that. And you see in our bulletin, there's an insert mm -hmm. with two names on it, right? Yeah. Deacon Cynthia Wiley and also Sister Flora Randall. And it has like a little bio on them. And this is what we're doing. And I thank God for the membership ministry coming up with this whole idea to keep us connected with the saints. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So that we know who they are. And then also, y'all, we know that this is the season of Lent. Amen? So since this is a season of Lent, what we're going to be doing every Wednesday from this point all the way up through Holy Week is that we will have a, one of our four pe um, preachers who are here, a part of our ministerium, will be preaching on Wednesdays um, from between 7 to 7.30, all right? So if, if, if your schedule allows and if you come to evening Bible study or you just want to come and hear one of them preach, from 7 to 7.30, and then after they preach, we will go from there into Bible, to our evening Bible study class. So we're inviting you to come on out these next four Wednesdays to come on out between 7 and 7.30. Um, we did the same thing during the Advent season. Y'all remember we did it during Advent? So we're doing the same thing here, but again, since there's only four of them, we just used those last four weeks. So they are excited about having the opportunity don't ask me who's preaching when. Just come on that Wednesday and you'll see. Amen. 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 And support them. We are doing what we can to create as many opportunities we can to have, allow them to preach. Because, you know, uh, we thank God I, as pastor, you know, I, I, I do a lot of preaching here. And I, that's what I'm called to do, preach and teach. But whenever the opportunities present themselves, we are creating them for our ministerium. Amen. Because there ain't a whole lot of Sundays for them to preach. Amen. So we're asking you to come on out, encourage them, support them, Amen. 7 to 730. And if you came to that midday Bible study, praise God and thank you for coming back to hear them preach. And if you have it and you know me coming to evening Bible study, just we're asking you, if you wouldn't mind, just give us that extra half hour just to support them and let them know that, you know, hey, I'm here to let you know I'm here to support your ministry and the gifts that God has given you. Amen. Amen. So that, that is that last announcement I wanted to give to each and every one of you. And, and we're thankful for what is happening in this ministry. And the one thing that we want to make sure that we do, no matter what, is give God all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Is our God a good God? Church is offering time. Amen. It's a time for us to give back a portion to God of all that he has given to us. Not grudgingly, nor out of necessity, but out of appreciation of who he is. And I want to thank all of our parents, grandparents, um, aunts, uncles, friends that have brought our young people and, and have them come and dance and have them come and sing. I thank you because of the fact that they can't get here unless you bring them. Amen? Amen. So we want you to know we appreciate you. And as I look at um, the praise dance ministry, and now they have eight of them, and it's going to be more, and we're thanking God in advance. You see, it's going to get to the point where we're going to be like, Harry, when that new church going to be built? Good. Well, that's why I wanted to get to that point where everybody is wondering when it's going to happen. But it's going to take all of us to get involved to get it to happen. Amen? Amen? All right. Let us all rise to our feet as we are going to recite uh, our Broad Rock Baptist Church statement for giving. Amen. 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 I've been doing it from memory. This morning I kind of slightly messed up, but I'm going to get even better at it. Amen. We're all there? 
I am a Christian that is open to God through Jesus Christ with my worship, serving, and giving. I am cheerful in my giving because God loves a cheerful giver. I know no matter how much I give, I can't beat God's giving. I will give to the best of my ability. Through my giving, the gospel of Jesus Christ is able to reach my community, city, state, country, and the world. Also through my giving, Broad Rock Baptist Church is able to help people within our community. God, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to help to grow your church and your people. I will apply Malachi 3.10 to my life as I move forward in faith. Now, before I pray, this is one thing I also want you to know. I know for some folk it could be a tough time, and this is third Sunday. And at our church on third Sunday, we give food out. We got bags in the back. And, and what we're also preparing for, because I am on the advisory board at, at Feedmore, I just want to make sure I, I didn't want to forget this, is that as things get a little rocky for some folk, we will be able to get more food than what we have gotten for Feedmore with no cost to help the community. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so I got this email. If, if, when, it, if it, when it gets to that, they're going to let us know because by me being on the advisory board, that automatically makes Broad Rock one of their satellite sites. So, so once this happens, I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need your support. I'm going to need your assistance. And I will let you know. And, and of course, I thank God for our document ministry that goes and gets everything. But, but we might need a few more all hands in if it gets to that point. But we'll let you know and we'll keep you abreast. Amen? Amen. So at this time, we want you to take your tithe and your offering. Even if it ain't paid, we lift your hand up with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for how you have blessed us and how we lift up our hands to let you know, Lord, we're here to worship you. And, Lord, and we're praying for those that are going through financial difficulties, Lord. We ask you to strengthen them and let them know that this too shall pass. We ask you, Lord, to use these tithes and these offerings for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on this earth as you guide and direct, Lord, and and we want you to take it and increase it, Lord. And we are thanking you that, Lord, we are cheerful in our giving and know how you're going to take it and do great things with it. We love you, we thank you, and we praise your holy name. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our blessed and holy Savior name, we pray. And we all together said, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We're going to ask members of our finance to come forward. Members of our finance, I see one, I see two. Amen, amen, amen. Deacon Jones, would you mind just standing up with helping them out today? Thank you, Deacon Jones. God bless you. Amen. And, and we're going to ask our ushers now to prepare themselves. And we want you also to know as well is that even if you don't have a tithe and offering to give and you're able to walk around, we want you to walk around and touch the basket and say, Lord, I thank you. You see, because before we can give God anything, we must first give who, y'all? God wants you more than he wants your money. Because once God has you, what are you going to hold from him? Amen. Amen. Can we all please stand in the direction of our ushers?
You may be seated. Amen. 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 We're glad you're here. And we thank God for allowing us to all be in this place. Amen. Let's, let's turn that one off. It don't seem to be working right. Amen. But what's going to happen right now, now that we have, because, you know, we, you know, you know, you know, you know do y'all realize the beauty of what's happening in our church? We have some young folk who are dancing, and then after they dance, they change and come and sing. That is a blessing. Do y'all realize that? Because they very easily can say, I just want to dance, or I just want to sing. They do both. And we thank the parents and those who are encouraging to do both, and we are excited that it's good. They are good with it. They are going to bless us with two songs of praise. And after they sing, I'm going to preach. And when you see me stand, I want you to stand with me. And we're all standing to honor the word of God. And we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter number 37. As we are in the Lenten season. Ezekiel chapter 37. Amen. Men, all right? So the young people are going to lead us in worship through song. And again, if it moves you, move. Because we're not quenching the spirit. We're letting God have his way. And we want our young folk to know that we're encouraging them. And we're excited that they are taking this position and leading us in worship. Amen? Amen. So after they sing the two songs of praise, I'm going to come back and preach. And if we receive all that, let's say hallelujah. hallelujah. Go on, young people.
Hallelujah. God has got the power. He can do anything. We thank God for our young people. Amen. Let's give God another hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, young people. Thank you, Chris and Pris. And thank all the parents and that bring out the kids. We, we thank you. And we're all together in Ezekiel chapter 37. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise your holy name. We thank you for the opportunity to break this bread of life which continues to enrich, empower God, and direct us. Thank you, Lord, for how you meet us right where we are to take us where you want us to be. Lord, we thank you for how real you are to us. Not just in our mind, Lord, we feel you in every moment that we live. And Lord, it's through that real feel and real relationship we have, we're able to move forward in faith and understanding and know that you have the power so we thank and praise your holy name this is our prayer in the mighty matchless name of jesus christ our blessed and holy savior name we pray and all god's people said hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. amen all right our reading is taken from ezekiel chapter 37 starting at verse number one Please follow along as I am reading the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Amen. Now I want you to just turn and look at somebody. I ain't touching them. Just look at them. Just look at them. And as you look at them, I want you to say, neighbor, neighbor I, can't stop I can't stop praising his name. Praising his name. Neighbor, neighbor, I can't stop, I can't stop praising, his name. praising his name. Amen. You may be seated. We had entitled, we have entitled our message this morning, I Can't Stop Praising His Name. Now, I, I know there's some concerns in understanding well, how in the world did you get here, Pastor? Well, if you go on this journey with me, you'll see. What we see here in this journey is a reality. 
And what God never wants us to do is try to live in fantasy when he's showing us the reality. The reality is just what it is, real. And what God has done is that he took Ezekiel, had him go to this valley, set him down in the middle of the valley, and the valley was full of bones. And once he took him there, he led him all around. Do we see it in Scripture? He led him all around and let him see. And he himself saw that these valley was filled with very many, and they were very dry. Now, what we're seeing is Ezekiel giving us the insight of what he saw. And what he saw, y'all, was real from that perspective. Real in that it appeared that God had taken him to a place which had no life. God had taken him to a place where there was nothing but death. You see, when you talk about dry bones, when folks see dry bones, that means that there's no life in that place. And that's saying that the area was arid because it was dry, which means that the bones, like if you step on them, you know, and they get crunchy. And, and it wasn't like he saw skeletons. They were just scattered. So you don't know who was who and whose bone was who. But, but it was a place that was dry. And then God has the audacity to ask a question. And the question that God poses to Ezekiel, he said to him, mortal, can these bones live? The audacity to ask Ezekiel, is there life around us? Can that which you see is dead, can it live again? Or is it done? And he, he raises this question to him. After Reverend Flippin, he took them all around. So with his physical eye, he didn't see life. He saw death. And then God asked us, Lord, listen to that, ask us. Asked the question. I got to laugh at myself sometimes. Asked him the question. Mortal, can these bones live? Now, it would have been very easy for Ezekiel just to say, no. But what Ezekiel knew, Evangelist Mayo, he knew the history of God and his people. He knew that God is the one that freed them out of Egypt. He knew God was the one that parted the Red Sea. He knew God was the one who provided food for them for 40 years while they were in the wilderness. He knew God was the one that got water out of a rock. He knew God was the one who took them into the promised land. Blessed them while they were there. So he understood the, that God has the power. He did say no, but he didn't say it from the negative. Because he said, Lord God, you know. And the reason why he said that was based on his understanding of the power of, of God. He was not going to allow his thinking to shrink the power of God. He said he's going to believe more in what God, I know what you can do. And I'm going to believe that more than I believe what I think. That's where we get into problems, my brothers and sisters, is when we depend on what we think rather than what God knows. 
We get in a problem every time when we start thinking too much rather than looking to the one who what? Knows. So what Ezekiel was not going to do was put himself in a position to where he was going to push God aside and believe what he wanted to believe because he was going to base it on what he saw. So what God wants to understand and know from us, are you able to still say, God, you know, when what your eye sees is everything that's wrong? There's always going to be wrong around us, my brothers and sisters. There's always going to be something around us. But are you still able to say, Lord, you know? Because I know what I see, but I know that you know. So what am I going to believe? What I think or what you know? And I want you to understand, in order for us to make our transition to truly move into the power of God and letting God's will be done, we have to get past what we think. Because as long as we're relying on what we think, don't you know what we think is too small? What we think has limits? What we think is caught in a box? What we think only can go but so far? But when we look to God and say, Lord, you know, and I'm going to trust in what you know, then we automatically knock down the walls. We remove the restrictions. There are no longer any limits. Everything becomes limitless because, God, I'm not relying on what I think or what I know because, God, I know that you are the creator of all things. I know that there's nothing too hard for my God. So, Lord, whatever it is, I'm taking the pressure off myself, and I'm going to say, Lord, you know. Isn't that what happened here? You see, once we're able to make this transition, Deacon Wiley, then God can use us. Because at that point, we're not going to rely on what we think. We're going to rely on what God already knows. Oh, somebody working with me. So what has happened here? Once that happened, then God said, now I can use you. Because look look at it now. Because he says to him, after he says that, now I'm going to have you do something. I'm going to have you prophesy. I'm going to have you prophesy to these bones. And tell these bones what I'm going to tell you. And as you prophesy to them, because right now they all broke up. Right now they're all scattered. Right now, they're in despair. Right now, there's no life in them. But if you do as I instruct you, I want you to know that they will live. You see, my brothers and my sisters, everybody who God is going to use, and when we're going to do ministry, when God uses us and moves us forward to do ministry, he isn't going to send us to the place that has a whole lot of life to it. He's going to send us to the place that's just like a whole bunch of And God wants to know, will you believe me? Will you go with what I know? Will you get past your own thoughts and put your trust in me? I don't care how dead it might appear. I don't care how dry it is. But if you do as I instruct you, I'm telling you, I'll bring bring upon the change. But you can't rely on yourself. you got to rely on me. Anybody ever been in a dry situation in your life? Anybody been in a situation where you weren't sure how you was going to make it to another day, get through another week, stay in where the house you're living in? being able to drive the car you drive because things seemed like they were starting to get a little dry but you didn't rely on what you believe you started calling on the name of the Lord and said Lord I need your help and didn't the Lord make a way out of no way do I got any witnesses in God's house who you've been in a dry situation but when you spoke as God told you to speak when you did as God told you to do didn't the Lord take it and do something with it Hold on, work with me. We ain't get there yet. What we got to understand here is that now (laughs) Ezekiel is now walking around prophesying. He walking around preaching. And he ain't getting no amens. He walking around preaching. He ain't hearing a whole lot. But then I want you to know, Digging Boo, something happens. That as he continues to preach, as God calls him to preach, There was a noise in the place. There was a rattling in the place. 
And I want you to know what the rattling was, was all the body, all the bones coming back together again. The ligaments was connecting the bones together again. There was a whole bunch of rattling going on, not a whole bunch of shouting, but a whole bunch of God making everything that was broken. God was coming and making it whole again. I'm telling you, when we do as God instructs us, don't you know God will bring life? Because look, y'all, look at this. Look at this. As he preached, as he prophesied, what we're seeing is that all the bones came back together and the ligaments, that's the sea news, was holding everything together. And as that happened, then all of a sudden they started getting the muscles on the bones. And as that happened, then all of a sudden the skin covered them all up. And now I want you to know that all the things that were broken have now been made whole. But they're still not breathing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's a process. Now, what we have to understand about this process is this. As long as a glass is broke, I don't care how much water you pour in it. Are you working with me? If a glass is broke, no matter how much water you pour in it, it's going to come right on out. But what we're saying here is this. Before God can give it breath and give it life, he first has to make us physically whole. Think about it now. They're all there. No matter how separated the bones were, they were all brought together and all the bodies are now there. They all have flesh on them. They all have skin on them. But they still don't have life. And I can see Ezekiel looking and seeing that, wait a minute, now they ain't, they ain't dry bones no more. I'm looking at a whole bunch of people who are here who are now, I can recognize who they are, but they still aren't breathing. You see, now God said, now what, what you got to understand is a process, Ezekiel. You see, because before I can put life in them, I got to put their lives back together again. I, I got I got to make them whole again. I got to let them understand that no matter. See, when you have been so toe up from the flow up and you have been so disjointed and so broke up, God's got to put you back together before he does anything else with you. God's got to make you whole physically so he can anoint you spiritually. You see, my brothers and my sisters, there are too many folk who want God to anoint them spiritually, but they still have yet been need have yet to be made whole they are not whole yet and until you get whole God can't anoint you and put stuff in you because if you put it in you too soon it's going to just leak right on out so what has happened here he says now I want you to prophesy and preach to the four wind tell them to come on in and breathe in them you see when I look at this breath this also is the same word that can be translated spirit you see, that there's two things. Yes, we need breath in our lungs, but we need spirit to it and the anointing of God in us to help us realize there's nobody but God who is blessing us. And once they were blessed and now that they truly have received the breath, it tells us that at the end of verse number 10, they stood up on their feet. A vast multitude. Isn't that what it says? They stood up on their feet, but they couldn't stand up until they were first made whole. And then they received the spirit and the breath of life. Once they received the spirit and the breath of life and they have been made whole, then they could stand up. You see, my brothers and my sisters, what God wants us to act, wants to know from us is why you're still sitting. You see, if, if God has made you whole and God has breathed his breath of life in you and have anointed you with his Holy Spirit, why are you still sitting? Because God wants to know that if I'm the one who brought you to where you are and I've turned your life around, why are you still sitting? But what he goes on a little further and lets us know is that in verse number 11, he now explains what this is really all about. It's really all about a group of folk, all of the house of Israel, and have, have made this statement here in verse number 11. Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off what? Completely. Why are they cut off completely? It's called sin. 
They are there in Babylon in ca captivity because of what? Sin. Because of the fact that they truly offended God and turned away from the one who blessed them with everything they have. They allowed sin to dominate. And don't you know the whole purpose of sin getting in our lives is if sin gets deep, in us in, deep enough in our lives, sin wants to suck the life out of us. Yeah. And when sin sucks the life out of us, then it puts us in a situation where we feel dried up. And once we start feeling dried up, what happens to us? We all of a sudden, we start to lose hope. And once we begin to lose hope, we realize that we are no longer connected to God. We've truly been cut off, and we've been cut off because of the sins that we've committed. But when I look at this, I also see something metaphorically which really excites me about the God whom we serve. It excites me about our Savior, Jesus Christ, our big brother who came, who stepped down through 42 generations to create an opportunity for you and I. Because when Jesus came to this earth, this earth was just like a whole bunch of dry bones. Don't you know when he, wherever he looked, he saw nothing but dry, dry, dry bones. But I am so excited that when Jesus came, he saw the situation, but he would not allow the situation to overcome him because he came to overcome the situation. Jesus came to bring upon change and by Jesus coming, he came and he made and did what we couldn't do. Because guess what? Don't you know when they hung him on that cross and, they, and he died on that cross, they thought they had him and that him Himself, he was going to turn into a whole bunch of dry bones. But what I'm here to tell you, that early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He got up to let us know that I have overcome. I am resurrected. I'm going to resurrect you from the sin that once had you bound. I've come to set you free. I'm going to let you know you're no longer going to be dried up. I'm here to let you know you can have hope again. I'm here to let you know you ain't been cut off and you still are connected. Uh, isn't that the reason why we're in church today? It's because the Lord has blessed us, healed us, and set us free. That's why I want you to know I can't stop praising his name because he's been mighty good to me. Do I got any witnesses in God's house? Anybody in here been dry before? Anybody in here been hopeless before? Anybody in here felt disconnected before? I tell you, that's why I just can't stop praising his. All God wants us to understand what he was doing with Ezekiel was letting us know what our big brother Jesus was going to do for us. We were a whole bunch of dry bones. Going nowhere, doing nothing, cut off. And guess what, y'all? It was all our fault, Deacon Jones. It, God didn't do it. We did it to ourselves. But rather than just let us sink in our own despair, God sent our big brother Jesus. That's what I see when I look at Jesus is nothing but grace and mercy. And when he got to us, folk thought our lives was over. Folk thought we were finished because the evidence said that we were dry. The evidence showed we had no hope. The evidence showed that we were cut off. But I am so thankful that Jesus Christ came when others thought it was too late. But he came right on time. And he made a way out of no way. And he blessed us. Brought us from a nothing. And made something out of us. Look at what our God has done. And you mean to tell me we can come to church and sit here and act like ain't no big deal. But I'm here to tell you that I can't stop praising his name. Because I know where I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be where I am right now. And the only reason I am where I am right now, his name is. And since Jesus has made a way out of no way, I just can't praise him. Do I got anybody else in here who knows how good God is, knows how good he's been, and know what he brought you through? I tell you, I can't stop. Because he's been better to me than I've been to my. Oh, 
Oh, we have been in a valley. And the Lord has brought us out. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But you know what? We, we needed more than a rod and a staff for us, y'all. Because we was dry bone. We were so dried up that the animals even didn't want to crack on them bones. Because they could crack the bones and there wasn't no marrow inside. I'm just telling you what our God had to work with. We ain't give God a whole lot to work with. But our God is the creator of everything. So all God needs to get started is called nothing. Because once you got God, you got everything that you need. Because all of us was a whole bunch of nothing. But now that the Lord has blessed us and brought us somebody a long way, I'm here to tell you, you still ain't all out of a bag of chips, two sodas, and a shake on the side. You're just a nothing that God did something with. So that's why you got to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. That's why I can't stop praising his name. Because where would I be if I didn't have Jesus? Do I got anybody who understands that? Do I got anybody who ain't ashamed to thank him? Do I got Got anybody who ain't ashamed to worship him? Do I got anybody who knows that if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? I can't stop praising. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I know we're dealing with some real stuff in this world right now. We're dealing with some real stuff in this world right now. What is happening to us these days? We don't have no point of reference. We don't. Because none of us was here last time something like this happened. But now, the reality is this. Are you going to move forward in what you think? Or are you going to move forward in what God knows? I'm moving forward on what God knows. Because as long as I'm moving forward on what God knows, I'm going to be all right. And that ain't just my story. That's also your story. And I want you to understand something. You came to church today. Praise God. But don't you dare look at somebody else who didn't come and say, see, your faith ain't like my faith. I want you to know your faith has grown to this point. It ain't happened overnight. So rather than look down at somebody, you ought to go home today and, and somebody who you don't see in church, give them a call. And just say, you know what? Missed you today. I, I know you got issues about that. That's all right. I'm praying with you. But I'm just praying that you don't let it bind you. Because all the enemy's trying to do is use this to bind you. Now, I ain't asking you to be stupid. If you see a, if you walk into a place where you know there's a hundred folk in there and all of them got COVID-19, um, <laughs> Don't you walk in the middle of them and say, I got this, Lord. No, no, Lord ain't asking you to be stupid now. If the Lord ain't sending you there, don't you go there. But I want you to know what better place for us to be on a Sunday morning than to put ourselves in the hand of the one who took us from a nothing and made something out of us. Isn't that what God did? So you, when you all leave this place, you ought to call somebody. Encourage them. Yes. Let them know that the walls ain't turned colors and the, the pews still held you. <laughs> and God blessed. Yes. Call them and encourage them. Church. Why? Because I can't stop. Praise can't stop. Praise I won't stop. I will not stop. Because he brought me too far. I didn't get here because of myself. I got to where I am because there's nobody but Jesus. Nobody but the Lord made a way out of no way. And since he did, that's why whenever we come up in here, we ain't got to wait for somebody to tell us what to do and how to do it. Because I know how good he's been. I know how far he's brought me. I know how he's blessing me. I know I didn't get to where I am. The reason why I know I'm all right is because I'm covered in the blood of the Lamb. I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, do I got any folk who are covered in God's house? I know there's stuff around us, but we're covered. We are covered in his blood. We are watched over by him. He might even send a few guardian angels around there. 
when folk are trying to send something my way, God said, no, it won't, and he kicked it out the way. But let me help you understand something. Let me help you. Let me take it a little deeper with you. You see, there were three young men called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said that I can't stop praising his name. I heard you, Deacon Wally. And because of that, I know I'm messing with y'all. Y'all need to stop over there. Because <laughs> y'all know I told y'all I hear it all. And, and, but, but, but what has happened with y'all? Can have a seat for just a minute because I need to give you this. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in Babylon. They were in captivity. But they themselves, once we see King Nebuchadnezzar built this 90-foot I mean, golden image statue of himself and told them, once the music play, everybody going to bow down and worship him. But you know what these brother, three brothers said? I hear the music, but I don't dance to that music. I don't bow to that music. And all the others who were there with him were bowing and said, y'all, come on, y'all going to bow. They're going to burn y'all. He said he's going to put you in the furnace if you don't bow down. And you know what they said? I can't stop praising his name. There's no way I'm bowing down to this. So they took them, and he gave them another chance. He said, you can give as many chances as you want. They said, well, I'm going to throw you in the fire. He said, well, either God is going to save us in the fire or God's going to bring us through the fire. But one way or another, I can't stop praising his name. And don't you know when he threw them? in the fire the expectation was for them to burn up but you know what happened when he threw them in the fire they didn't go in there they, it appeared they went in by themselves but when they got in there there was somebody to hold them up don't you know I don't care where you go if you are a child of God you ain't ever going by yourself when you say I can't stop praising his name the Lord is with us wherever we are he's blessing us wherever we are he's going to get us through wherever we are do I got any witnesses in God's house do you know that the Lord is with you? Do you know that God is blessing you? Do you know that God is keeping you? I tell you, I can't stop praising his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. He is good. We'll continue to be good. And we'll see us still. Because... He's shown us grace and mercy. We are who we are because God has made us this way. So we can't stop praising his name. If the doors are open, I'm coming. And I know some of y'all were seeing on the TV, this church closed, that church closed. I ain't judging nobody. But every time I saw it, I just said, that's all right, Lord. We have in service. We need you. We need you more right now. This is the time we need you. This is the time we can assemble. This is the time where we praise him. This is the time where we thank him. Because I will not go back to being a dry bone. He brought us and has made us who we are. So I can't stop praising his name. Let us all rise to our feet. Let us all rise to our feet. You see, my brothers and my sisters, are you in your valley right now? Are you in a place where you think you can't get out? Do you feel cut off because of what you've done wrong? Do you feel you have no hope because of the decisions that you've made. You feel God won't smile on you anymore. I'm here to tell you, Jesus came to change all that. And all he's asking you to do, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, is to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. Somebody said, well, Rabbi, I hear all that. Praise God, but I'm already saved. Well, if you don't have a church on, as my brothers and sisters in Christ are walking the aisles, we extend our hands to you, saying, come on, give us your hand, but give God your heart. We invite you to come today as a candidate for baptism. We invite you today to come under Christian experience. All we're saying to you is if God is touching you and moving you, 
we invite you to come because he loves you and he cares about you just the way you are. So will you come today, my brother? Will you come today, my sister? He's waiting. He came here just for you. So will you come today? Will you come today? Will you come? Will you come? He's calling you. Will you come? He's reaching out to you. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? It's time to get out your valley. Come on today. Come on today. Come on today. Come on today. All those that want to join us at the altar for prayer, come on up. We ain't joining hands, but we're going to stand next to each other. I don't want nobody to be stressed out about, oh, I ain't going to touch them. We ain't asking you to touch nobody. We're just assembling at the altar. We just ask you to come and join us at the altar. Let us remember our little girls over in Haiti, little Miss Esther Adolph and little Miss Wachel Francois. Let us remember Mother Mary Austin, Brother Bernard Miller, Sister Deandra Bauer, Brother Ira Miller, Brother Lawrence Branch Jr., Mother Virginia Moore, Sister Geraldine Bridget, Brother Sam Pryor, he's at the Veterans uh, Aid Care Center. Uh, Sister Carolyn Gibbs, Brother Sam Pryor, sorry. Sister Flora Randall, Sister Jewel Harrison, Sister Selma Roberts, Sister S Shirley Jones, Brother Philip Thornton. Within our community, let us remember Brother Leo Brooks, Brother Navian Edwards, Sister Kenat Nita Fountain, Sister Harriet Johnson, Brother Marquise Macklin, Sister Phyllis Owens, Sister Gladys Person, Sister Gloria Jean Pope, and Deacons Ronald and Edna Whitehead. Amen. Thank you, Evangelist Mayo. And then also, if there's somebody who God has placed on your heart, we just ask you to call their names out now. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now in prayer. First, foremost, and always to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for we know what you're able to do. That's why we can't stop praising your name. And that's why, Lord, we're calling out these names to you. Because, Lord, we know what you've done in us. So, Lord, we know what you can do in them. So we're claiming the victory as we lay them on your altar. And just say thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it in their lives. Lord, we thank you for your word this day. Your word which continues to remind us, Lord, the grace and mercy that you've showed us. That while you saw us in despair because of what we did to ourselves, Lord, you still loved us. You still sent your son to do and pay the ultimate price for us. And Lord, and that's why we can't stop praising your holy name. 
And that's why we move forward with our mandate. Lord, we teach one in order to reach one. Because, Lord, we want folk to know if you did it for us, you can do the same thing for them. And, Lord, and as we move forward, Lord, we don't want anybody to ever think that we are a people who are sinless. But through our relationship with Christ, we have learned to sin less each and every day, Lord, because we don't want to stumble. We want to be the best and do the best that we can to glorify you. So we just say right now, thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for what you've done and how you're doing it. Lord, I ask you to give everyone under the sound of my voice a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit as you continue to enrich and empower us and allow our lights to illuminate wherever we go. Because right now, Lord, this is a dark time. And this is the time for our lights to shine bright, to give folk hope, help them to know it doesn't have to stay the way it is. And Lord, and we're praying for those that have contracted this disease. And we're thanking you, Lord, for how you're healing them. And we're praying, Lord, that you will subside it, that you will bring it to an end because, God, you've got the power. That's why we need to be in church praying. Because when the people of God pray, change occurs. And we're thanking you. Because we've prayed and seen changes happen in us. So we know, Lord, nothing is too hard for our God. So we thank and praise your holy name. And Lord, and continue to bless this church that it will continue to be a beacon light to a darkened world. As you guide and direct, bless, heal, and deliver. So, Lord, we just give it all to you and thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to get it done as you touch hearts and change lives. And we're just praying, Lord, also for the leadership of this country. We're praying for the CDC leadership. We're, we're, we're praying, Lord, for the local leadership. Lord, and we're just praying that you ease the hearts and minds of people. Lord, let them know if they can worry, they can pray. Because prayer brings change. Yes. Worry brings us down. Yes. And Lord, and we understand that we're not going to go with what we think. We're going to go with what you know. Because you are God all by yourself. So we thank you and praise you. Now may the grace of God, the communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. Our blessed and holy Savior name we pray. And we all together said hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Turn and look at somebody say I love you. You can't do a thing about it. Take a look at it.